Welcome to KC Cares. We're Kansas City's nonprofit voice. We're telling the stories of Kansas City nonprofits and the people behind them. KC Cares is proudly sponsored by the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. I'm Ruth Baum Biggis. There are nonprofits in our community that do special work helping uplift people, moving them forward to independence. And that's what Rightfully Sown is all about. We're joined today by Jennifer Lapka. Jennifer is an entrepreneur, founder, and president of Rightfully Sown. We're so happy to have you safely distanced, right? Right. We want to ensure everybody that we're following the rules, but we're, we're spreading great news and great stories. And Jennifer, I think what you're doing is such an interesting model of lifting up and moving forward. Tell us a little bit about what is Rightfully Sown. Yes, Ruth, thank you so much for having me on today, KC Cares audience, and to Bobby in the back end who's putting it all together for us. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Rightfully Sown creates jobs and opportunity in Kansas City through the business of fashion. We do that specifically with a seamstress training program, fashion designer professional development program, public classes for adults and children who want to learn how to sew or do fashion design. We also offer small batch production services, which is an earned revenue stream for us. And we can talk more about that later, I'm sure. We are five years old, just turned in September of this year. We launched as a fiscally sponsored project of Community Capital Fund. And I think you have a question for me about that as well, but we are located in the beautiful Crossroads Arts District. We're at 18th and Wyandotte. How did you come up with this concept? We wanna know a little of the background about you. I, I think there might be sewing or fashion in that background. <laughs> yes, Rightfully Sewn really is an amalgamation of my personal career, my personal uh, interests and my career stops. As an undergraduate student at Fort Hayes State University in Central Kansas, I studied art history. I did a master's in museum studies in Northeast England at Newcastle University. I landed in London for a time working at the Victoria and Albert Museum, which is a huge encyclopedic museum. And we, I, I really came to know at that stop that fashion is art. They had the most amazing collection of fashion. They did an annual program called Fashion in Motion where they brought in a contemporary British fashion designer. And so, yes, it was an aha moment where I realized fashion is art. In Kansas City, I've worked at the Nelson Atkins Museum, the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art, the Kaufman Center, and then I moved over to the other side of the table, so to speak, after my, my time at the Kaufman Center. I worked for the late and great Henry Block and his two foundations, the H&R Block Foundation and the Marion and Henry Block Family Foundation. We were a... Um, highly effective small team that managed both of those, those foundations. And it was there really that the idea of Rightfully So Informed. I was very inspired by Henry's philanthropic way of life and his family. Uh, one of his favorite things to say that he was brought up with was, as soon as you have three meals a day, it's time to help the next person. We would give grants to social service agencies, many of which rightfully so now partners with, but to learn about those agencies, to know about the amazing services that they provide to individuals, to know how hard that those social service agency staff members work, I was uh, just blown away. And learning about a national trend to add work training opportunities into that equation of services to, uh, to lift an individual out of a systemic situation uh, for good. That's, that's a very important piece of the pie, so to speak. So rightfully so, really um, the idea of sewing, the notion of domestic manufacturing, the, the aspiration of retaining fashion entrepreneurs in Kansas City, 
marrying all those together is what Rightfully Sewn is all about. You have had a very interesting journey. Wow. Where to start? We could, we could spend an hour just talking about your whole museum adventure. <laughs> and I think it's interesting. I, it, I feel challenged to come up with another word, but that your time with these other nonprofit funding organizations are part of your background. So mm -hmm. when you had this, well, let me ask it this way. Did you have this aha moment mm -hmm. that was... I love fashion, I, I love art, and I love helping people. Mm -hmm. How did that come together for you? Right. Well, at the time, I was also producing the West 18th Street Fashion Show. Um, and so to get to know the, and I'm a huge supporter of Kansas City Fashion Week. There's also a fashion group international. There's Critique Fashion Show. There are so many entities in Kansas City for fashion that are really developing the community and getting to know a lot of fashion designers and knowing that they wanted to stay in Kansas City, but really had no choice for, for decades. They had to bleed to the East and the West Coast. That brain drain was just so unfortunate. So to be able to retain them by creating some sort of system, which included professional development opportunities and the opportunity to actually um, manufacture their clothing and get it out to market. Those are all very important pieces to, um, to keeping them here. And so that production, that local production piece is an opportunity for employment. That was important for you? Absolutely. Uh, really, I believe Rightfully Sewn at the heart of Rightfully Sewn is the work training component, the seamstress training program. We've had six classes now. Uh, we've graduated over 30 individuals with a 93% graduation rate and an 85% seamstress job placement rate. We have Rightfully Sewn has hired one of our own graduates so far. It is our goal to hire more as we move into the future and our partnership with Alpha Point, which I know we'll talk about in this interview as well. Um, but by and large, all the other graduates so far have been placed with tailor shops and manufacturers here in Kansas City. A couple of examples is Knit Right on the Kansas side and on the Missouri side, Elevate Dancewear. Do you know about her? Do you know about Lisa Chols? Please share. Okay, I think it's a very exciting entre fashion entrepreneur story for Kansas City. Lisa Chols is a retired Kansas City ballerina and she just happens to be a very, uh, she has a very elongated torso. She's very tall for a ballerina. So she was always making her own leotards. So when she retired, she she started making leotards for her her dance friends and then her friends of the dance friends and then uh, her, her, you know, children of, of friends. And then the next thing, you know, and I say it like it happened easily, but she has worked so hard over the last eight years to grow her business, which started in her home to now having her own beautiful big factory in Midtown in Martini Corner. She has over 30 employees and she's hired, uh, well, three individuals and she's making a job offer for three more individuals from our program. So for us to be able to partner with an entity like hers, who is a very smart businesswoman, she's a very kind businesswoman too, which is very important to me because the populations that we work with are very vulnerable. We're talking about refugees, survivors of addiction, prostitution, abuse, and otherwise to know that we are placing our seamstress graduates in into the caring hands of employers like her who also offer you know competitive wages but also 401k medical scd ltd uh, it, it, it's very very exciting you're doing all kinds of things i wanted to circle back and ask you about being this financially sponsored project and yeah. that whole process. 
I think uh-huh. so many of our our followers and listeners and viewers would like to know more about that. Thank you for asking. I think it's a very uh, it's a very powerful tool that maybe not a whole lot of people know about. And for anyone, who, any entrepreneur who has a nonprofit concept, they should really consider being a fiscally sponsored project. When I was thinking about Right Place Own, I met with a lot of funders, a lot of nonprofit leaders, including Reinhard Mabry at Mabry from uh, Alpha Point. And again, we'll talk about that later. But I also went through Kaufman Fast Track, which is now called Elevation Lab New Venture. And there are many different ways that you can form a business. Uh, All of them, you have to operate in the black and be powerful and financially feasible. Um, But a fiscally sponsored project is a way to get a nonprofit concept to market quickly and test the market to see if your services are actually needed and if you can be financially viable. So Rightfully Sown launched under or with the fiscal sponsor of Community Capital Fund, which is a 501c3. They're over on uh, Mohart. They are um, a subsidiary of Altcap, if you know that 501c3, ran by Ruben Alonso. Community Capital Fund is, uh, the executive director is Megan Crooks. So essentially they exist, a fiscal sponsor exists to provide administrative and um, administrative assistance and oversight to a project like Rightfully Sown. So for instance, we can fundraise without having our own 501c3 by having a fiscal sponsor. So there is a legal agreement between Rightfully Sown and, uh, and Community Capital Fund. If there's a grant we want to go after, then they have to approve that. They review the grant, make sure the application, make sure it's in line. Uh, and then they also, so they receive the funds on our behalf. And then as we expend those funds for the programs that we, that it's meant for, then they reimburse us for that or release those funds to us. So there is a ton of oversight. We, we answer to their board. Uh, I also created an executive council, which acts like a, a kind of an adv- advisory council. Um, um, I love a lot of oversight and mentorship. So essentially we have more than one board. We have two boards at Right Place Zone right now. That's got to be an interesting dynamic to have to uh, weed through. How do you do that? Uh huh. Well, for the relationship with Community Capital Fund, we have to send them a monthly report. Uh, so they they have a lot of oversight. Their board looks at all of our information as well. Uh, and then for our advisory council, the executive council, we meet twice a year. A normal board would be quarterly, and that's something that we're going to move to because exciting news: we are applying for our own five hundred one c three. And um, so anyhow, it, it's been great. I, as I mentioned, I, I love mentorship. I love oversight. I love communication. I'm not afraid of any of those things. I think you are a better human. I think we're a better, stronger organization with all of this oversight. I should mention too that it's really important when a nonprofit picks their board or their advisors that they They really do a lot of legwork to inform that individual what the mission is, what the goals are, um, and that way everyone stays in step. We do want to go into your whole merger with Mm -hmm. Alpha Point. Mm -hmm. We love Richard. We've had him on the show. But before we go there, I want to enlighten our audience about some of the remarkable things that you've been doing during the pandemic. Okay. Well, in January, you know that we have this beautiful atelier in the heart of the crossroads and we have the best sewing equipment that you can get your hands on. Most of it we source through Missouri Sewing Machine Company, which is a wonderful long-term family owned business here in Kansas City. Uh, And For instance, we have a $13,000 flat lock Juki machine, which is very hard, you know, and rare to find. Um, So 
we are outfitted with the equipment and the skilled labor to sew product. And if the pandemic has done anything, it has taught us that sewing is essential. In January, I had already read an article about the shortage of PPE, personal protective equipment. And that particular article was about the shortage of surgery, surgical masks, in 95 masks as well. And so I thought, hmm, you know, we could help with that. But however, there's a huge liability issue relate, related to sewing masks. We're not a sterilized factory. It's not on mission, it's not fashion. Um, and so I just dismissed it at that time. But as you know, January turned into February, the epidemic turned into a pandemic. It started reaching the United States shores and then it started, you know, we saw the yellow and the orange and the red starting coming to the, the Midwest. So as all of that happened, the direct messages, the emails, the phone calls, the personal, um, questions, but then that they became, please, please, can you sew masks? And so it was imperative to pivot. It was imperative to fill that need that our community has. And, you know, six, eight, seven, eight months later into the pandemic, looking back, now I could see that that was also an important financial decision to make for the organization. Because nonprofits, um, I think we're finding during the pandemic, are needing to pivot. And if they're not, then they are struggling. So we actually raised almost $200,000, which is nearly half of our operating budget for, for 2020. And we were able to hire seven additional seamstresses as contractors some of who were graduates of our seamstress training program that were unfortunately let go from other businesses because those businesses slowed. And then they were uh, professional seamstresses just in the community looking for work. So we were able to you know, wrap our arms around them and bring them in during the you know, a very critical time to sew 40, over 40,000 fabric masks and these masks were donated to 35 entities that were, you know, small social protest organizations to mid-sized nonprofits to large hospital systems like Children's Mercy, St. Luke's, Swope Health, and, and more. So we were honored, humbled, and uh, grateful that we could help the community in that way. But then it also allowed us to keep our people employed. So a pandemic pivot and a blessing. We're talking with Jennifer Lapka, founder and president of Rightfully Sewn, and we'll get into their exciting news about their merger after this. Mm -hmm. We're back talking with Jennifer Lapka, founder, president of Rightfully Sewn. Creative, uh, kind, mm -hmm. interesting, soon to be nonprofit on their own, but let's talk about your exciting developments uh, just in recent months uh, with Alpha Point. Tell us what's taken place and then we'll dive into how and why. Yes, well, oh my gosh, it's, it's so exciting. And the seed for this was planted five years ago, as I mentioned earlier, in starting Rightfully Sewn, it's very important to me to talk to a lot of people and understand what the needs in the community uh, were and are, and what is the best way to form? How do you operate a powerful nonprofit? And Reinhard Mabry, president and CEO of Alpha Point, was one of the individuals that I reached out to. Working at the h &R Block Foundation and the Marion and Henry Block Family Foundation, I knew about this nonprofit headquartered in Kansas City. I also knew that they earn the majority of their revenue, which is the way every nonprofit should be thinking about in the future. And they are always listed in the top manufacturers in the Kansas City Business Journal. They are manufacturing writing pens, cleaning supplies, hand sanitizers, which has been so critical during the pandemic. Um, and in their Queens, New York location, they're actually sewing apparel. 
So there was a lot to be learned about their model five years ago. In April of this year, 2020, he reached out and he said, hi, Jennifer, it's Reinhard. Do you remember me? And I said, of course I do. And he asked, I've been watching Rightfully So. How are you doing? What is it like to be manufacturing in Kansas City? We have more contracts um, than what we have capacity for. Would you like to have some of them? And I said, uh, yes, we would. And in fact, our missions are so similar. You know, they advocate, train, and employ people who have blindness or visual impairments. And so they, they really assist them into employment. And that's exactly what Rightfully Sound does for refugees and, and individuals who uh, are survivors of addiction, prostitution, and abuse, and otherwise. So, and, and, all, and if you kind of take a more aerial view, we're doing that in addition to really reshoring manufacturing. And so it's, it's very exciting that we're so similar. So to talk about not only AlphaPoint sending us sewing contracts, but how can we provide an additional work training opportunity for their clientele? How can Rightfully Stone start employing some of those graduates? Uh, and then AlphaPoint can send us sewing contracts. So it's just, there are just so many ties uh, that it makes so much sense that we become, that we merge and we become so closely tied in, in a long-term fashion that, that that's how this has all come to be. Is the merger done? Are, are all the things done that need to happen? Yes, so we officially closed on October 15th. And so now it's just, uh, part of the relationship is, uh, and and I would you know again talk about fiscally sponsored projects are you know that's a great way to form merging and and partnering between partnerships between nonprofits. That's another amazing way to think, you know, collaborate and, instead of duplicate. So as we, you know, the, the legal paperwork is done, as I mentioned, October 15th, but now integrating our staff. So I have a weekly meeting with their CFO and their VP of HR because we will be rightfully sown can access their benefits, which are much better. They have almost 400 employees. So their benefit package is much better than one for our six employee organization. I've been doing CEO, CFO, CMO, and um, you know facilities management and so on and so forth. So to be able to partner with them and offload some of those things to allow me to really fundraise and focus on some, you know, really core functionalities is very exciting. So right now we're in that period of, you know, meeting each other and figuring out how, what does that all exactly look like? And I love it. I, his team, Reinhardt's team is amazing. Absolutely amazing. But you're going to keep your own identity and be your own nonprofit. Correct. That is correct. So thank you for asking. So our fiscally sponsored project is transitioning to a 501c3. So we have applied for our own 501c3. We have an FEIN -E number. Um, the name rightfully sewn is legally attaching to that. The brand, everything, the team, the programs, everything is just, you know, to the public, there will be absolutely no change. Um, but the back end sort of uh, legal entity is what changes, kind of the skeleton of it. So that 501c3, the rightfully sound 501c3, will be a subsidiary of Alpha Point. So Alpha Point is now rightfully sound's parent organization. And you did this in a pandemic, <laughs> yeah. where we can't really, or we weren't supposed to get together in person. Yeah. How did you all kind of maneuver those aspects? Yes, everything except for a few face-to-face -face meetings where everyone had masks on. Everything was done by email, phone call, and video conferencing. It's a, it's a new world for sure. 
I hope they were wearing rightfully sewn masks. <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Um, they, they, Alpha Point has their own masks as well. And so rightfully sewn team, we had ours on, we've gifted some of ours to them and they've gifted some of theirs to, to our team. And uh, it's a, it's just a really exciting partnership that I, I can't express my gratitude to them and also to the funding community, because as after we signed, um, you know, that legal agreement to reach out to all of our funders and our core donors and to let them know, hey, this is exciting news. Uh, everyone has just been so supportive, which is so exciting. And also, I should mention there are kind of a couple of related exciting bits of information that we haven't touched on. Because Rightfully Sewn pivoted to PPE production, that made us eligible for state funding. So we are in the middle of buying a, a computerized cutting table, which is, I mean, that's a $150,000 piece of equipment that we have been dreaming about since we uh, you know, launched five years ago. We can buy more sewing machines. So we are, we actually signed a second lease on a suite in our building. So we are in the pandemic where, you know, I've, I've heard between 20 to 35% of nonprofits are going to fail. Rightfully sewn is expanding. We are buying more equipment. We are about to hire about 10 more seamstresses full time. And we were expanding our footprint. That's incredible. So there are some blessings coming out of this pandemic. I know it's so hard for people to think about it that way. Right. It sounds like from what you've shared, one of the keys is that cooperative, collaborative spirit. Yes. How would you advise other nonprofits, other CEO, CFO, COO, wearing all those hats to look at that since you've really lived mm -hmm. through this and recently. Yes, I think the benefits of partnering and collaborating far exceed any challenges that come with it. Um, I think, you know, one person asked me, you know, Jennifer, this is your baby. You've, you've had ultimate control over it. You have made all the major decisions. How are you going to do with, you know, letting go of some of that control? And, and that's just something that I personally have to get over and to, you know, take my ego out of it and take, you know, if we kind of catapult up into the sky or even into outer space and, and look down and, and see the impact that we can create Alpha Point and Right Free Sun put together, that means so much more than my personal you know, angst of not being able to control everything. I didn't create Rightfully Sewn to benefit myself or um, because there was no major sale of, of Rightfully Sewn. Everything is just transferring to the 501c3. So always from the beginning and even now, it's all about impacting people. It's about expanding the positivity in our community, in our nation, in our world, which really needs some positivity. <laughs> what, as you sit at this juncture, mm -hmm. what does the future look like? And what do you envision yourself doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ruth, oh my gosh, how exciting. Um, so, the other shared piece of this relationship is Alpha Point has a business development team. And as I mentioned, they have a, a, their second location in Queens, New York. So the, the fashion mecca of the United States still resides in New York City. So that relationship, that now direct relationship that Rightfully Sewn has with New York is very, very exciting. And the projects that Alpha Point already has in the hopper to send to Rightfully Sewn is what is enabling us to say, okay, yes, we do want that extra equipment. Yes, we do want that, that extra space and we, knew, we know it will be sustainable. So for to have you know, that powerful uh, bloodline, if you will, 
for more sewing contracts is very, very exciting. So where do I see us in the future? I see us really having Kansas City, a, a nationally respected hub of apparel manufacturing. It's inevitable. And I also think it's very important because during the pandemic, I've been personally thinking about family, friends, finances, and the future. And if you think about fashion in the future, we are the most pollutant, the second most pollutant industry on the face of the planet after the oil industry, according to some studies. So how do we change that? Uh, I think a huge key to that is to figure out the end of life garment. What is the what are what is the garment's end of life plan? Instead of just letting the majority of them go into dumpsters, how do we collect and recycle and monetize and innovate it into new fabric? There are already entities uh, like Evernew in Seattle. Unify in um, in Greensboro, North Carolina, that are addressing this issue. So can rightfully sewn uh, with Alpha Point, you know, our partnership. Can we bring some sort of fabric recycling center to Kansas City? That is uh, in the future. Is it three years? Is it five years? Is it ten years? I'm not sure. But that's something that I really personally want to focus on going forward is to really solve that issue because we don't want our future for our children to look like Wally. -E, if you know that, you know, that Disney that reference. Yeah. Maybe it's not Disney Pixar. I'm not sure, but um, you know, I think it's just so important that we start thinking about um, every industry needs to be thinking about how to, how to deal with the end of life for their product. Well, one thing is for sure, rightfully sown is an exciting, in an exciting phase. We want to make sure folks can check out everything you're doing at rightfullysown.org. And we want to thank you, Jennifer. We wish you the best of luck and we will watch as things continue to develop. Thank you, Ruth. And we want to thank you for listening to Casey Cares, Kansas City's nonprofit voice. We're produced by Charitable Communications. And we're proudly sponsored by the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. If you'd like to be a guest on Casey Cares or underwriting opportunities, please visit our website, caseycaresonline.org. And you can spread the love and find us on Facebook and Twitter at Casey Cares Radio and on Instagram at Casey Cares Online. Thank you for listening to Casey Cares. <laughs>